Ulla <laughs> In your last simavunga, nineteen fifty three or till ago. In your ship toll of Tilunga, Ilinia Rally Lapsimagivunga, good your alum. She will look by Mokata Lapsima Longalo, Pia Rossi, you know, Ilisha is young nineteen seventy six me. Taymangalunit Ilinia Catasima Talaralama, Ilipale you yalita in Naktunga. Isu makatya na sa ulok tungalo, takun nagakalo, at ukon na katalok tuig. Ima kakae sila tupalok si malok punga. This Master of Education is the first graduate program ever offered in Nunavut, bringing experienced Inuit teachers together from across the territory. It draws on knowledge from Inuit and Western educational traditions. Both English and Inuit languages are used in the courses. We completed 10 courses together over the three years of this program, face to face but also through distance. The distance learning was a challenge, but we used knowledge form, an online learning system. This allowed us to maintain our community, respond to text, share ideas, and continue to write online. It's been an exciting experience. I grew up in two different worlds. My parents are <clears throat> traditional parents, and I grew up in their environment, in Inuk environment, and then I went to school where I had to learn another way of living, I guess patterns and thoughts and how to juggle between these two worlds. And like it used to be, um, the school had one culture and uh, another culture in the community. Kaluna culture in the school and Inuit culture outside of the school. And I would like to see uh, the school reflecting the culture of the community more. It's happening, it's starting to happen, but um, I'd like to see more of that. These days, children go to school in their home communities, but many of our generation had to leave our families to go to school. I was taken away from home when I was seven years old to a residential school. I felt like I was made fun of, I was made to feel less than, that I was no good. And, and even in the workforce, when I became a teacher, uh, either the other teachers or the principal or other people in uh, authority made me feel less than or not good enough. Now, with Nunavut, we are trying to take back control, working together to create an Inuit educational system. This master's program is preparing us to take on leadership. And then to celebrate, to say, now we have Nunavut. And in Nunavut, we can now decolonize ourselves. And now we Many people are excited about it. I am. I, I had to train myself to slow down. Change is slow. Change must happen slowly. Education takes place in social and political context. Millie and Maggie are touring the Legislative Assembly where decisions about education are made every day. Millie, you've been teaching for quite a while now? Kind of teaching. 
Oh, I started out as a classroom assistant, sharpening pencils. It was in 1983. Then mm -hmm. when you asked the students in the schools, what would you like best out of what Nunavut can give you? To be in Umarik. Mm -hmm. To be in Umarik, to, to know how to hunt, know how to survive, know how to speak my language but still be kept up to date with all of the new technologies this world is bringing us to have a balance. Mm. Right now we're very heavily, our cultural language side is going down low, when the modern side has gone higher mm. with all the new technologies. So how do we reverse that so that it's a balance, teeter-totter, and not one heavily outweighing the other? Mm. Mm. Innate leadership is needed in all areas of education. Elisapia Nunia create curriculum, books and learning materials in Inuit languages. These women have succeeded by overcoming challenges in families, communities, in their work and studies. They have spent many hours reading, writing papers, discussing the complexities of education. Now they are completing their Master of Education degrees together. And we need space. They have to, we have to start, it's our territory and we need to be an example to younger generation. I mean, it's a start for me, it would be a start for me to have kids look up to me as an administrator, not just an administrator, but as a person. You know, I, I've heard time and time again that um, teachers who are t should stay in the field of teaching, but the ultimate goal of the master's program, from my perspective, is for you as leaders in education to start looking at leadership positions. It's going to take all our creativity, hard work and resolve as we move into positions as principals, vice principals and administrators. It's time for us to step into these roles to create the educational system that we want for our children and the future. We can do it together. Um, in order to, for us as a society here, to move ahead and really take things further and take ownership, the, the power struggle between the, the dominant culture and language to ours is very real and very concrete. And uh, the master's program is a vehicle to helping us to take ownership and move forward. Our ancestors uh, met newcomers as early as... Now Luck defended her master's thesis in April 2008 at the University of Prince Edward Island. She was a bit ahead of us because she had already taken some graduate courses. Because they started staying in the north longer. Sir Charles Francis Hall, um, on the ship with him was my great, great, great grandfather. Put on the left, top left. It's, it's very important for a culture that has been um, changed to be able to um, have their own history and their own um, knowledge and culture written down. And uh, if it doesn't get recorded, if it doesn't get written down, then who else is going to do it? Um, it'll always be from the viewpoint of the, the newcomer or the, the anthropologist or somebody who's come up here for three days or three weeks or three years. Now luck graduating in May 2008. Developing Inuit scholars and university level teachers is an important outcome of the master's program.
Now, now like another graduate, Yuki Pahainu, have come back to the program as instructors. They have brought new perspectives and knowledge into many of our courses. Elder Shelfus with our learning, Mika Angnaka, our Inuit professor, is a respected elder from Panuktok. With her, we were able to explore Inuit theories of learning much deeper in Inuktitut. Sometimes the, the language that is used in Inuktitut can um, be too general and not be specific enough to the concept that's being discussed. So sometimes a, uh, an English word will squeak in to the conversation or dialogue that's, uh, that's in Inuktitut. So um, when Mika was speaking, I made a point of writing on the board um, the concepts and the, the terms that she was using. It was wonderful to um, be able to see that, you know, Mika was using such beautiful, intricate language to describe these concepts that had been used in English by uh, these different writers. We spent time reading about some of the major theories that inform Kalonak society. Dialogue takes place in both languages as students discuss challenging concepts and theories. Let's talk about the, this class system that he's talking about. Mm. That um, is a social condition in which all aspects of social reality are dominated by or supportive of a single class. Um, when I was reading that, I was thinking about um, that there's a disconnect between the Inuit of Nunavut and the and the um, in institutions that mm -hmm. are running the the territory, whether they be government schools or or college or whatever. The components of Aulayak that I used were values, societal values. In my teachings, I integrated that into my teachings, and every day there was crying in my classroom. Mm. Students are not just talking about the theories, they are relating them to the issues and challenges they face in their teaching and leadership. Whether our students are ready for the content of our uh, Incorporating Kalunak epistemology and in epistemology together seems to put our culture into the program and also learning about um, very important Kalunak uh, epistemology seems to help me really to find out where I am and who I am and where I'm going within the professional world. <laughs> Chaima <laughs> It's ready. Tea is ready. Tea. Yeah. During the program, we've been using a lot of creative approaches to learning. See, I never grew up with these kind of toys. Me neither. Here we are representing the connections between theory and practice by building models. There. Yeah. Voila. Pointing to the future. It's time for us to present the theories. Okay, everybody. Who do you have? Uh, Mark.
Marx, the Karl Marx. The back of the wheel is like the NTI, where it started the land claims, and the wheels are representing government of Nunavut, our superstructure. It has branches. Some are going up, some are working, and some are not <laughs> uh, <laughs> running so well. Creating a new government was a huge undertaking. Many Inuit teachers were drawn out of the schools and into positions in the Nunavut government. We need to increase the number of Inuit teachers. We did Gramsci, and he talked about the hegemony, whereas uh, social condition in which all aspects of social reality are dominated by or supportive of a single class. So in, in this illustration, you see the, the Inuit, um, Inuit society apart from the, the government of today, Nunavut government. We have a part in both worlds. Whereas an elder like what um, Mika was saying yesterday that there's a big mis not understanding between the two. And as organic intellectuals in, in our understanding about Antonio Gramsci's theories, that's us. We're the ones that are the organic intellectuals because we understand the two and then try and make sense, make a sense for the both two. Lena McDook, the longest serving school principal in the Eastern Arctic, originally hired Maggie as a classroom assistant. She encouraged her to become a certified teacher. Now Maggie is considering becoming a principal. You need, need mentors, guides, and role models. We need support from experienced Inuit as we take on new challenges. Nimmi <laughs> The challenge is how do we work that through to, to allow myself to feel balanced as an Inuk educator, as a woman leader, as, um, as a person who's now making decisions in our own home communities where decisions had always been made for us. It's like finding a voice and it's okay to voice, it's okay to put in your culture, your language, your ideas, your perspectives, because uh, we've gone through being able to name what has happened to us in the past and to be able to take it out and make it better for today after what has happened in the past. So we made it together through many challenges and obstacles. We've worked very hard for three years so we can continue to make changes 
for education in our communities. Education is the key to helping rebuild a society like ours, which has been um, upturned uh, during the, the transition. There's how many of us? 22 right now, 22 of us. And what, when we start talking about something, it, it gives us inner strength. And um, we're empowered to do something about it. We, we go back to our, our jobs and sometimes the only thing that's keeping us going is this group. Not only one is getting free, but they're getting free all together. I want this really bad. I want it to be not so much successful, but I want to be an example to other people, especially for younger people. Being almost a middle-aged person, um, I want them to know that education doesn't stop at grade 12 or grade 9, that you can still go on. You can learn as long as you want. <laughs> Tora